Hello, and welcome to Marble Public School Superintendent Corner. I am Mary Murphy, the Superintendent of Schools, and this is the October 2023 episode of Superintendent's Corner. Joining me today is... RJ Scaza, the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning. Uh, Jody O'Brien, Assistant Superintendent of Student Services and Equity. Carol Cohen, Supervisor of Guidance, Grades 6 through 12. Um, thank you, Carol, for joining us today. Um, as you said, it's, it's sort of an informal initiation, right, to the Marble <laughs> Public Schools. Um, we, one of our goals is for the um, community members to hear about the different administrators and the different supports and the different roles that we have. Uh, we've talked about the fact that often administrators pick up multiple layers of um, roles as they join us, and I, ca I think I cautioned you of that. At the <laughs> yes, beginning, you did. Right? Yep. To like try to be realistic because we all are so happy you're with us. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, uh, would you take a moment to just share with the community some of your experiences before you joined us? Sure. So, my goal when I graduated from college was to get a job teaching English, and I'm very glad to say that didn't happen. So I have been, I did teach for a little bit, and then I went into guidance and administration. I've worked in the Boston Public Schools. I've worked in Framingham and in, in other suburbs. Um, and when the opportunity presented itself to come to Marlboro, I couldn't turn it down based on what I knew, what I could find out about, about the schools, about the community, and then once I joined and realized that people don't leave, I'm like, that's the other reason to stay because that speaks so highly about the schools, the community, and the staff. So, yes, we were talking the other day, and you you were sharing some of the research that you did, and I was sharing that one of the things that I always say to people is we hope that when you join us, you'll love it as much as we do. And so far, so good. So far, so <laughs> good. Okay, good, great. <laughs> um, did, uh, yeah, so I was wondering like what some of your initial impressions were of the middle school and the high school and the Marlboro community once you came on board. I love the diversity, um, which is so apparent in the students and staff. And um, both buildings have their strengths as well as their challenges. I think one of the things that I've really appreciated, I've got great guidance counselors and they're working with students on academics and social emotional and trying to make our new students feel welcome and included. Um, the challenge has been that they all have, because they all have different strengths, they're not necessarily working together as a department. And so what I'm trying to do is make sure that all students have equal access to their counselors, make sure that they're getting the same opportunities, the same information. And so working, that's really my goal this year is to make sure that we're all on the same page and students are getting what they need. Great, uh, so I'm not sure if the community knows, but we did some restructuring for administration. So the position of supervisor of guidance for six to 12, so overseeing those guidance counselors at Wickham and the guidance counselors at the high school, is something that has not been in place um, in, a, in a while um, for a number of years until um, we we're able to to get you in here and so um, in kind of learning about the systems that are in place what are um, besides the goals um, of getting that continuity are there any other um, areas that you have seen as, as far as strengths uh, things that um, that are in, in the works for uh, moving forward? So there are pieces of developmental guidance curriculum that are there, and again, it's just pulling them together. So one of the things that we're reinstituting that didn't get done last year is one minute meetings at Wickham. So that the guidance counselors are meeting with all of their students, literally, I have a counselor who sets a timer for one minute, they're more like five minute meetings, mm -hmm. and they're just quick, get to know you with the goal of the same form is going with the student through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, helping to build the relationships with the counselor, giving them another trusted adult, getting them to think about the future, whether it is tomorrow, high school, or beyond, um, and thinking about where they want to go to high school, what they want to do after they graduate. Um, and at the high school, starting to have students think about that in a little bit more in depth. What are my strengths? What are my challenges? academically, socially, emotionally, where can I really start to think about my careers um, and what do I need to do to get there? And how does um, 
course selection and the classes I take pull into and, and thinking about the many pathways that we have in Marlboro, mm -hmm. as well as the access to early college. It's it really, it's great and students need to think about it before it's there, yeah. so. Great. Um, one of the things that we were talking about is that in Marlboro we're very proud of the um, number of advanced placement and um, college level courses that, and the pathways that we have open so that um, a majority of our students um, are participating in those courses and are graduating from Marlboro High with college credits. And the discussions about our, with our students that some of them don't want to go directly to college, mm -hmm. but they have those transcripts and they have those credits right. so that path will always be open to them. Um, and working with some of them that want to go directly to, into the workforce Mm -hmm. But there are a number of companies that will also support that yeah. college um, path as well. Yeah, it's really nice that we've got the Pathways program so that students can start doing internships in cable um, <laughs> and and through Mass Hire um, and early college, um, sorry, early childhood education, uh, EMT. They've got various ways that they can learn trades and skills and, and things as well as earning college credit that then if they go directly into the workforce, they may be fortunate enough to get a job where the company will pay for them to go and they're already coming with credits. So even if they have to pay for, the, pay for it themselves, we've already taken care of maybe potentially the first semester, if not more. Great. Maybe they even come on board uh, in the school system, in the yep. Marlboro Public School System, right? Because yep. I know that there's an internship possibly as part of the early childhood yep. um, path. Can you just talk a little bit about what that internship might entail? Yes, so we have an internship where they can intern in the early childhood center. They can also do an internship in an elementary school and work with teachers. We've talked about having them go to Wickham and, and do there so that we can keep our keep our graduates and hire them back as employer employees um, and and grow our own because again there's so much strength here that you know we don't want to let them go yeah we have uh, so many Marlboro high school graduates that are now employees I, I just remember them taking the the uh, graduate alumni photo uh, right before school had started and, and the number of, right? of staff that yeah. that were former students it's amazing yeah, um, one of the first uh, um, during new staff orientation we do that we do an introduction um, to all with all the administrators and then we say how many of you taught and then how many of you went to school and it's amazing how many um, st of our employees have roots very deep and never want those roots broken and that is so special yep. it really is. Um, more so at the high school level, I think you were thinking about Wickham um, students, but at the Naviance mm -hmm. software yep. um, that I know students have accounts. Could you maybe talk a little bit about what that is so that parents know, like, so if their student is is going into that program, like, there's a lot there. Um, there's I remember my own son going through. Um, there's a lot of different resources there. I'm going to start 12th grade and work backwards yeah. because we just met with our seniors yesterday to remind them and let them know that if they are applying to college, that they need to send their transcripts. And the way to send their transcripts is through Naviance. And so it's a, it's a college and career guidance system that um, students can request their transcripts be sent. They can also do explore potential colleges to apply to. In 11th grade, we're going to start the we start the exploration process. If you're thinking about, well, whether you're thinking about going to college or not, what do you want to be, and then what what is the education you will need? Um, if it is beyond high school, what are what are some of your options, and where might you think about? In 10th grade, we can use Naviance really to focus on career exploration, strengths, challenges, um, using things like the strong interest inventory, which is sort of a personality test and tells you where your strengths may lie. Um, and in ninth grade, we're starting with, um, they call it Intelligence Works, which I don't know that I love the name of it, but mm -hmm. it's basically 
a multiple intelligence test. So are you, do you have strong interpersonal skills? Are you good with talking, speaking with other people? Is it intrapersonal skills? Do you know yourself well? Are you a kinesthetic learner where you learn through movement? Um, are you better at reading or listening? So we're going to start with that with the ninth graders soon. Yeah. We're going to get them into Naviance, and then we're going to show them how to do this, and what the, and then what they can do once they have yep. these results. So, and that for the student, um, those inventories, that it's like a survey, right? It'll yep. ask you questions: Do you like this or that? Yep. And then it gives you the results. And if I remember correctly, for my son, um, from there, it would say, "Here's some different um, work environments. Yep. Uh, you know what? You know fields that might be yep. interested in, in match up with." with his strengths yes, and maybe yep. some to stay away from yep. that, that based on like what he doesn't prefer. So. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, when, P, uh, when I think many of the community members or parents think of guidance, mm -hmm. um, they think about the college applications and they think of that college pathways. Those are things that you've been working on and you've talked a little bit about that. They also think about uh, college fairs and mm -hmm. visits and um, maybe different colleges coming either at night or different times. I know that you've been working on some of that. Do you wanna share some of sure. that? So one of the things that Marble has, Marlboro has had and, and reinstituted after the pandemic was having college representatives come and visit the high school and meet with students who are interested in in the school one of the things that we're doing this year is i've put in a questionnaire and so we meet with every college rep who comes and we ask them a series of questions starting with do you give merit money and and do you have a gap in financial aid meaning that if a student is expected to pay x number of dollars and the college will give Y dollars leaving a gap as opposed to saying, yes, we're going to give you everything you need. And we ask them straight up, you know, because we want to know if you're going to give a gap, then we're then we may not. Then when we're going to have different conversations with students about your school, but the schools that say, yes, we meet full need. We're like, yay, come on <laughs> in. Um, and we write. And so we take all the information. Their favorite, the college's favorite question is I ask them their best kept secret. That always that stops them. Oh, that's like, unusual. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. So they're like, oh, I really need like, to think about yeah. that. Um, and so we write them up. We get them translated into Spanish and Portuguese and now Haitian Creole. And then I put it on the Google, the senior class Google Classroom so the seniors have access to it. So that if they, I just posted Regis today. So if somebody is interested in Regis College and they're like, oh, I didn't get to see them, mm -hmm. they can go to the Google Classroom and read the questionnaire and what the colleges had to say. So that's neat. Yeah. It also helps us build relationships with the colleges so that if we have a student who's interested in a particular college and they may not quite have the grades that the school is looking for, we can pick up the phone and say, hey, I've got a great kid um, and start to continue to develop those relationships and help in the admissions process. Um, one of the other things that we've talked about um, is that you don't work in isolation <laughs> at high, very true. high school. You're um, a member of multiple different teams and you are instrumental to um, some of our forward looking um, plans that um, I know that you've been working with at times the director of alternative education mm -hmm. and um, you're part of the high school leadership team. Yeah. Um, Hopefully they're not pulling you in too many directions. No, but they're, they're being they're behaving. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, as a leadership team, I think uh, one one area that each of the schools is focusing on is the chronic absenteeism, mm -hmm. uh, and then also students who may have dropped out. Absenteeism does play a high um, is a high risk factor for dropping out, mm -hmm. and we had just recently met to talk about students who may have left um, the high school and, and might be considering coming back as far as like streamlining, not having to go through the full registration yeah. process. Um, how can we streamline that mm -hmm. and have them be able to re-enroll um, in, in a much quicker, easier um, process? So uh, what we came up with was just um, uh, one proof of residency just to make sure that they're still um, a resident and then just making sure that they have an updated medical and that that's all that they would need to be able to um, 
re-register and then they would meet with their guidance counselor and right. um, come up with a schedule and, and kind of look through that credit um, credit evaluation, right? Right, and hoping, exactly, to get, because there are so many pieces in the registration process that it can be cumbersome. And so this is, we know you, we love you, we're glad you're coming back, how can we get you back in mm -hmm. quickly? And then the exactly guidance counselors will meet with them build a schedule and get them back in Tallahassee sooner. And sometimes that pathway leads to our alternative night programs mm -hmm. for some of those students. So yes. then um, you would work with um, either Lynn Medallio or with Sarah Casey about different alternative programs. Yep. Um, also, district-wide, I know it's just, it's only October, so we know that we're um, just starting these conversations, but long-term, um, Hildreth expanding the use of that building and what everyone's needs are, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. being um, tutoring centers or alternative programs yeah. that we can use that program for. Yeah. So we appreciate your voice <laughs> in the in those conversations as yeah. well. So, and I think for uh, students that may have dropped out, it's it's still not too late to mm -hmm. consider if they wanted to re-enroll this mm -hmm. year. Um, you know, we take enrollment on an ongoing basis, so right. I think. Um, there's also credit recovery opportunities too, besides yep. what um, whatever they might be taking during the day, right? Yep. There's um, through Apex, we can mm -hmm. we can enroll students in courses maybe that they left before the end of the school year, and they just have a little bit more to get that credit, or they had excessive absences Absolutely. and they need they need to make up the time to get that credit. But yeah, I, um, Sarah and Lynn were two of the first people that I met with. We were meeting all summer talking about the program coming up this year yeah, and, yeah. and trying to determine who is a good fit for the evening programs because it is a great option for some students and it's not the answer for everybody. And mm -hmm. so trying to figure out, trying to evaluate who really is a good fit for that program. So, yeah. Yeah. And really appreciate because one of the things that we've been talking about is trying to be flexible and not say that every student has to fit in every model. Um, so it's it's not either or that we should be able to um, develop what we need and having your voice to help us develop is really appreciated. Thank you. Great. As a guidance counselor, my favorite answer is it depends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking back to my high school guidance counselor and what a patient person she was. So I think it might be a virgin, <laughs> virtue that you all carry. <laughs> Um, did we miss something? No, okay. um, I think that was... Anything else that you would like to share? Do you think that uh, we, um, any of your priorities moving forward that we haven't discussed? It's just the, you know, it's the equity and access. Um, I mean, you had a better experience with your high school guidance counselor than I did with mine. I had a conversation with my guidance counselor when I, my, my high school was 10 through 12. Um, and when I got there, he said, so if you don't have any problems, you don't need to see me, right? And I said, right. And he said, wrong. And that was the last conversation we had. And I don't want that for anybody mm -hmm. else. And so it is my goal to make sure that students know who their counselors are. They do see them on a regular basis, that it's true. They don't need to have problems to see their guidance counselor and really that we're there for to meet all yeah. their needs. Good philosophy. Yeah. Thank so. you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. So that is um, it for the October 2023 episode of Superintendent's Corner. We hope you join us next month. Thank you.